Hello and welcome to the EEPROM 9. We're currently on the 360s Skyrim. I'm back for the Easter, but won't be. I'll be back and forth because there's assignment work to do. And this is essentially an update saying I'm back! Ah, there seems to be a bit of lag, so voice won't be in sync, but it's shit quality because it's webcam and it's just quick and easy. Because, well. I got lots of photos on this using this and because I wanted video which would be for one thing not take up photo memory and also not take up any other form of memory and also actually have a decent amount of memory to go by for recording footage. I went with a little camera I got when I was 13. This beast. I owned this before I actually owned a digital camera. It is a Sony Handycam DCR slash HC19E PAL. Batteries are beginning to show their age, but it held out. Currently, the only copy of the video is on tape. This tape that's just ejecting now, and I love the eject mechanism. It's kind of like an old 70s video recorder, or early 80s, or whatever, I think. Of it. I highly recommend you watch this. There is some gaming stuff on it. Oh, God, yeah, the quality of this thing is horrible, but it's just an update video, so nothing important. Crap, I just dropped it. Good job these things are quite versatile. Good old tape. Mini DVs. They're not amazingly cheap. Pack of five. Twelve quid. Mind you, these aren't cheap either. For one of my souvenirs. One of the old style printing cameras. Pop. Polaroid, as they're known, has ultrasound auto sensing for detecting distance. So, a load of tape back here. I need to put it on there and I shall watch it to review it. And I. Uh, that'd be minimal editing. No need. I might cut some stuff out just for some other reasons, but. Should we make a video? Very good camera this, let down by its white balance. Doesn't have an iris in like the digital camera or the other one that I picked up recently. And also, yeah, stuff like that really, should be good fun. Got myself one of these. And currently I'm using the Euro chain. Here's an example of it. There's a two Euro coin. It's twenty cents and here's a one Euro coin. Which all you can see is a circle. <laughs> Fantastic quality, yeah. And look, you can see my C64 right where my thumb is. In the cupboard. And a few other things I really can't make out due to the crappy quality, but I kind of know what they are because they're mine. Oh, I have the joystick tape drive and some binoculars. Got them absolutely yonks ago. I think they're pre puberty. <laughs> yeah, there's some stuff in that cupboard that has been in there for quite a long time. I might take the Netgear router back to uni, because I need routers to play with. But yeah, whatever happened to the day of the European countries having their own currencies, like the French having the francs? Instead all we have is this generic thing. This is 10 euros. Whatever happened to own currencies? I like foreign currencies, it's nice coming across other currencies. But why did they switch to a generic one? It's just, oh. The reasoning behind it, truthfully, was 
make trading easier. But do you have to sacrifice your uniqueness? It's just no. Keep, keep, no. England should keep it to the pound. Have we got any examples of some British money in here? Nope. My wallet is skint and I'm not showing you my bank card. I kind of dumped all the change into this. Which is actually quite a brilliant little device what it is. <laughs> Payable arcade machine, brilliant. I don't know who thought that up the idea of the money box. Made of course in China. <laughs> like most things in this world. Hmm, maybe I should play the Mega Drive. Yeah, so I've also got a money box down there as well that I got for her birthday, which is a really nice one. But that'll probably be more ornamental than actually physically used. It's one of those ones you have to break to get the money out, and it's just like, well... Me being me? Nope, you get the Dremel, cut a hole in the bowl, find a little cork. Sorted. Ah... <laughs> uh. Both the camcorder batteries need charging. <laughs> I've got some pretty cool stuff, and also... I'd like to say a thank you in advance to Mr VX once again. He sent me an email about sending me a book. Or oh, technical manual on one of my computers I have. He's not revealing what it is yet. Um, bearing in mind I own 27 of the bastards. That's 27 different options. Most of which I don't actually have manuals for. I'm guessing it's going to be one of the 80s ones. That's just a guess, but exactly which one I'm not entirely sure. Could be the BBC, it could be the Husky Hunter. That'd be cool. It could be anything. Actually, there's a good chance it could be the BBC because they were used a lot in educational establishments. Uh, is this phone charging yet? I want to switch back to this, the old Sony Ericsson, which seems to have gained a blob on the screen. Excellent, it's charging, and there's you can see the result of what the blob has done to it. Let's fire it up. Normal mode, of course. Virgin Mobile. Once again, can't be seen because of the shitty camera. Inactive SIM. Have I actually put a SIM card in here, then? Oh, Jesus, the screen is bad on it. Is this actually still on at 12-something AM? No, time's gone off. Oh yes, I remember this fella from back in school. <laughs> it has a really cool hairstyle, which is exactly why he's on my screensaver. Some people thought that was a bit weird, but... I am weird. According to most people, anyway. Parts of it are working. Poking it doesn't help, it just makes the rest of the screen go fine. There's my dog. Let's switch back to this thing. Reading text could be a bit of a pain. The battery is not charged. I'll take back the other one as well, but I need something that's actually usable. <laughs> there you go, it's gone back to the screensaver. <laughs> I wonder what he's doing now. Seeing him on the phone just reminds me. Just makes me wonder what he's doing now. Um, what else is there to tell you? Uh, had a bloody good time. And got a toy car for my dashboard. Yay, and it's pulled back. <laughs> There's actually some put footage of me like pulling that back and then driving around the apartment, crashing into walls and stuff. Uh, the fun. Got enough gas mask. I own five now. I might, I might actually do. I might actually give the gas mask their own video. 
Oh, it's amusing. It's just like people are like, you have gas masks, and they are absolutely determined. Harry, they absolutely insist that this can only be a sexual motive. How has it even come to their minds that the reason I collect gas masks is the reason I collect computers? Because they're awesome! And historic. And I do have a I do have a thing for military history historical items. I do have a few things of me military memorabilia, including something that I reckon really cool. A sniper scope. My mum doesn't like weapons, so I don't have any weapons. Would be quite nice to have an LMG stuck to the wall if you ask me. I've also got a plane gauge, shell, I've got little like bullet cases and stuff in various places. My brother owns a few dud blanks that he picked up when he was a kid. <laughs> blanks that never fired and they do they just live it. Actually I think he was gonna chuck them away and I think I inherited them and they're now in the loft. <laughs> and I misfired blanks. <laughs> They never fight. <laughs> Probably still got gunpowder and crap in them. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> no, I don't care. <laughs> never ever fired when we played with them as kids and threw them around, pretending <laughs> bullets flying out, machine gun. <laughs> uh, that's what you do as kids. You collect stuff like that. Now, of course, after battle reenactments, they don't let you go out and collect blank bullets for that exact reason of picking up misfired blanks. Mind you, they've never done any harm. They're just somewhere in the, I don't have a clue where they are in the house. They could be in my tip fix box, which is the yellow box that I am just pointing at. That's a great thing. Uh. Uh. What else? Oh, do, 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 do. you've seen my cameras. I will do a video at some point on all the cameras I've owned. I've got to show you this. Um, what else is there? Uh, yeah. That's what, yes, yeah, see, uh, you do get people who do the planning, do the scripting and that, and the yeah, I do see why you can end up choreographed, you can get in everything you want. It's just, why would I plan anything? Anyway, the rest of it will be a surprise. The Berlin video is worth watching, trust me. Just make sure it's an hour in the evening or something when you've got an hour to spare because it is about that length. I'm also thinking I'm going to give it its own intro. Rather than just a standard generic acorn electron coming in the front door, maybe I'll give it the. Uh, maybe I'll. I need to splice off one of my other intros. I actually brought the hard drive back I used, so that's alright. Yeah. I got a video covering. Here it is. The music you can hear is Skyrim. Good game. Trouble is, being at uni, I haven't really got far in it. <laughs> I don't have time to devote many weeks in it. Just a quick run round this evening. What? <laughs> I walk across a massive expanse of land and reach a destination that I'll end up fighting some monsters in a few months' time. When the summer starts, the exams are over. Ugh. The Joy of Sex. <laughs> I've never actually read that book. <laughs> that one my mum gave me ages ago. A few years ago.
when I was mature enough not to laugh or <laughs> everything in it. <laughs> and here's some books I've had for absolutely since I was young. Yeah. Ah, oh bugger now, everything else is falling out of the bookcase. Don't blank screen. First we have dinosaurs. And my favourite, where's the picture of the T-Rex tearing apart the raptor? There we have the T-Rexes arguing over the raptor, which is at the bottom there. Then we have, da -da -da -da, it's further back, because that's later on. There we go. T-Rex eating the raptor. <laughs> They're my two favourite pictures when I was a kid. They are pretty cool. <laughs> then we have my cars book. And it has like things of the future. It's like, where's the future page? Like cars of the future. It's near the end if I remember correctly. Where is it? There's an article where it's essentially referencing to satellite navigation. Here we go. Traffic and news. Electronic devices can warn drivers to avoid traffic jams, overhead sensors on the road, monitor traffic speed and control. Center sends reports to display panel in the car. And there you have a rudimentary form of satellite navigation. And there's a good old Volkswagen at the top there, which is awesome. Because Volkswagen make excellent cars. And then you've got a few concept ones, one that looks quite a bit like the modern smart car, and the rest are just like your usual sort of concept cars that look cool but never come into reality. And there's a bloke sitting on a go-kart. <laughs> the other one is Gemstones. Go on, who doesn't like stuff that looks nice? Plenty of nice gems and stuff in here. Then we've got rocks and minerals, which focuses on quite a bit of geology. Yeah, there's more interest that I have that people don't know about. And then we have science. It's like these are quite old books from the early 90s or something. And then we have like electronics, and there's a picture of a radio opened up in it and a transistor, and says how that works. And of course, right there where my finger is, we have an EEPROM. My finger, my this finger, and then the plan of a chip there. Then we go on to computers. There's a Cray machine. Then we get on to more stuff about computers. Then it's televisions and stuff. And there's a CRT. And so on and so forth. Then we have inventions. And And inventions page of like CRT and a computer PCB. There's also a few other things. And also. A drawing of the CRT. As well as this drawing was done a few years ago, but I'm essentially taking the piss out of someone there. <laughs> this image. <laughs> And there's valves and transistors and stuff, and there's like little security cameras at the bottom. And on this side, it's sort of random doodles, including a bomb. Well, this this is like sort of average random doodles for me, which consists of robot dogs, robots. Bombs, weapons, 
random badly drawn Bart, radars, grenades, more bombs, <laughs> exploded grenades, World War II German stick grenade, fair few grenades in this one, a few robots being worked on, one that's all broken up. All the fun of being young. That picture was that was drawn all the way back in early secondary school. And of course we have the body facts. Now I'm heartily hopeless when it comes to knowledge about the human body. This book knows far more about the human body than me. My mum's a nurse, so she knows a lot. <laughs> she hasn't come out with all these weird medical terms, and I'm like, doll! In layman's terms, please. Right, let's put that in the other book, which is. Agatha Christie, one my brother gave me. Let me go back in there. Most of the books I actually own are all fact or encyclopedia type things. I have a small selection in the cubby hole there that's a few story books, but once again there's a few eh, encyclopedia type ones in there. And now there's computer books and they're infiltrating in. Oh, this is one someone gave me at college. Which was nice. From the 80s as well. It's got some beautiful examples of images of computers and factory conditions, for example a pet being used in a factory. I don't know what the factory is doing, making, but it's making something. <laughs> yeah, it's quite funny when people ask, like, what is it that Aetis computers do? Well, uh, everything they do now except, except go on the internet because the internet didn't really exist then. The foundations for it was set up for a Cold War communications network. But it's only in peacetime that someone actually decided to put that network to use. And now it's our internet. I wonder how many legacy systems are left running as our core internet. Actually let's sort out my phone. Where has it gone? Hang on. Where, Where is the little bugger? I've probably cast it down on the floor or something. Should be sitting there. I would ring it, but I don't know the number. I don't know my phone numbers. I don't know any phone numbers. Oh, where is it? Is it on the floor? Because it likes to fall on the floor a lot. Oh, this is a fun video. If you're not watching me search for an old phone. <laughs> oh, God, where is it? gone, it should be on the desk and it's not. They've really got lost in the time of Is it in this pocket? No. The ticket for something in Berlin. Um, apparently the whereabouts of it are unknown then. Ah, oh, there it is. Cost 20 quid and it really does show. I wonder if the... hang on. Is the LCD display can because I can see some swapses. No, it's bigger. <laughs> so we'll just turn this one off and this one can, basically this one can be a backup. <laughs> Hang on. Back. Go back. No, I actually caught that call. Hang on, do I have... Messages, I want... Back... I want... Um, I want text messages because I want to get someone's number off. I'll try and make this as exciting as possible. Big fan of touch screens, if I'm honest. At least if you're going to give us. Mm, 
there. Oh, where's some pen or something? Oh, this is what I'm not being able to do to type. I can't believe I'm... There it is, found it. Righty then, so I'll write this down on a box or something. I use this envelope actually, don't fall on the floor 360 controller. <coughs> she sent me this number a while back. To say the numbers out loud because I don't really want to be broadcasting people's numbers over the internet for obvious reasons. I'm sure she doesn't want random people calling her. Zero five. There we go. And the only numbers you know are zero and five. Good luck constructing the rest. <laughs> It's written on a bank letter. What boring crap has the bank sent me? Another statement? Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, yeah, it's another statement. It's time for the account that I pay my accommodation with. So it has a lot of money in and then of course then it's charged and then it has no money in and then it builds up as it's added to by various sources. Ah, what do we have here? We have some Doctor Who books down there. I do like Doctor Who. And here's a sneak peek at this. And I just, uh, and here we have a few schematics and useful tip bits. We have my beam robot design I designed myself. Let's turn that off actually. We have on this page a failed project of a robot arm. On this page we have my CRT viewfinder hacks. On this page we have the other viewfinder that I got up and running. This one is where we start the VFD clock. More to do with the VFD clock. Display pinout. The VFD graphic equaliser. And of course, switch configurations for my thingy for my power supply that I built. And of course, more VFD clock multiplexer circuits. Um, the circuit for the oven VFD clock circuit, I actually got this thing powered up and working, but very quickly blew up the chip. But this circuit works. I never got a chance to test the buttons and actually set the time. <laughs> One slipped finger. Bang! It no longer worked. Blew all the fuses too. Didn't trip the circuit breaker. <laughs> Probably blown up the whole power supply if it got to that stage. But anyway, I think that's enough from me. I'm going to call it a day now because this video is far too long for just a general ramble. But that's why I say general ramble. I'm quite tempted to plug in the ZX81, but I need a tape drive for it. There's actually some tape drives in the loft. Maybe I'll have to just nick that. Running as a spare for the hi-fi downstairs. Anyway, that's me over and out. I hope you enjoyed. And I think I'm going to go to bed soon because I'm feeling tired. Night, night. And I hope you enjoyed. Because I... Uh...
good. And once again, thank you, Mr. VX. And also, I need to send a thank you to the person who got me in that magazine. I still need to do that. Bear with me. I'm a busy person, especially since starting uni. Because tomorrow is when work starts again. I'm having today off, but tomorrow I must start again. Get the report done for the programming. That'd be a good thing done. Then I can hand it into the sign-in office when I actually return to do the group work, which will be in a day or two. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Sorry about the shit quality, but I really couldn't be asked to setting up one of the other cameras. I'll see you when I next see you.